the mark of existence, the mark of substantial self absolutely and was satisfied with the mark of empty dharmas. Why then does he adorn his body in the manner of those who seize characteristics? Answer. If the Buddha adorned just his mind with wonderful attributes, and if his body were lacking the major and minor marks, some beings capable of being converted would mistake him under the pretext that the Buddha is without bodily marks. They would not welcome the Buddha Dharma with open hearts. Thus, if one filled a dirty bowl with choice food, the latter would not be appreciated by people. And if one filled a stinking goatskin with precious things, those who received them would be miserable. This is why the Buddha adorns his body with the thirty-two marks. Moreover, often the Buddha utters the lion's roar in the great assembly and states that, among men, all his qualities are superior. If the Buddha did not adorn his body of birth with the major and minor marks, some would say. His body is ugly. Why believe him? When the Buddha adorns his body with the thirty-two major and eighty minor marks, there are still people who do not believe him. What would it be like if he did not adorn his body with the major and minor marks? Finally, the attributes of the Buddha are very profound for they are eternally destroyed. Fanatical madmen, beings do not believe in them and do not accept them. They say that in this destruction of the body, nothing is to be had. That is why the Buddha uses his broad tongue and his Brahmic voice emits great rays of light from his body and, by means of all sorts of Nidanas and Avadanas, teaches his marvelous attributes. Seeing the majesty of the physical marks of the Buddha and hearing his Brahmic voice, beings rejoice in them and believe. Moreover, the ornaments are internal or external. The meditations, absorptions, wisdom and other qualities are internal ornaments. The majesty of the physical marks and the perfections of morality are external ornaments. Inwardly and outwardly the Buddha is perfect. Finally, out of compassion for all beings, the Buddha appeared in the world. By means of his qualities of wisdom, etc. He benefits beings of sharp faculties. By utilizing his physical marks, he benefits beings of weak faculties. By the adornment of his mind, he opens the door to nirvana. By the adornment of his body, he opens the door to godly and human happiness. By the adornment of his body he establishes beings in all the three meritorious activities. By the adornment of his mind, he establishes beings in the three gates of deliverance. By the adornment of his body, he pulls beings out of the three bad destinies. By the adornment of his mind, he pulls beings out of the prison of the threefold world. It is in view of these immense benefits that the Buddha adorns his body of birth with the major and minor marks. Bodhisattva Kula Fourth section being born into the family of the bodhisattvas, etc. Sutra The bodhisattva Mahasattva who wishes to be born into the family of the bodhisattvas. To attain the level of the crown prince and to never be separated from the Buddhas must practice the perfection of wisdom. Sastra I Being born into the family of the bodhisattvas. The family of the bodhisattvas. If someone produces a very profound mind of profound great compassion towards beings, he takes birth in the bodhisattva family. In the same way when one is born into a royal family, no one dares to despise you. Furthermore, you fear neither hunger nor thirst, cold, nor heat, etc. It is the same for the one who enters into the assurance of bodhisattva and is born into the family of the bodhisattvas. Because he is the child of the Buddha, Devas, Nagas, Yaksas, Satpurasas, etc. Do not dare to scorn him but increase their veneration. He does not fear the bad destinies or the lower places among gods or men. He is not afraid that the Sravakas, Pratyekabuddhas or heretical masters will come to destroy his resolution. Furthermore, from his first production of the mind of Bodhi, the Bodhisattva makes the following vow. Starting from today onward, I will not follow any bad thought. I wish only to save all beings and to attain supreme complete enlightenment. Furthermore, the bodhisattva who knows that the true nature of dharmas is unborn and unceasing acquires the conviction that dharmas do not arise. Henceforth he is definitively settled in the position of the bodhisattva. Vice Sasan to Brahmaparipartsha. Thus the Buddha said in the Tshe Sin King. When I saw the Buddha Tingkaong, 
I obtained the conviction that dharmas do not arise and I completely fulfilled the six perfections. Prior to that moment, I did not really possess generosity, discipline, etc. Furthermore, the Bodhisattva has the following thought. Suppose that kalpas as numerous as the sands of the Ganges were only one day and one night. That thirty of these days were a month. That twelve of these months were a year. That the number of these years were more than a hundred thousand myriads of hundreds of thousands of kalpas and that finally there appeared a single Buddha in whose presence a bodhisattva would offer his homage, observe morality, and accumulate qualities. Suppose. Moreover. That such Buddhas. In number as many as the sands of the Ganges followed one another and that afterwards only this bodhisattva receives the prediction of someday becoming Buddha. Well then, the mind of this bodhisattva would show neither laziness nor discouragement nor weariness, and he would fulfill all the practices of his estate completely. Furthermore. The Bodhisattva experiences loving-kindness and compassion toward beings predestined to perdition and guilty of the five misdeeds of immediate retribution and toward people who have broken the roots of good, and he introduces them into the right path without waiting for their gratitude. Furthermore, from his first production of the mind of Bodhi, the Bodhisattva is no longer enveloped by or ruined by the conflicting emotions. Furthermore, although he contemplates the true nature of dharmas, the Bodhisattva no longer experiences any attachment towards this consideration. Furthermore, the Bodhisattva always spontaneously offers words of truth and, even in his sleep, tells no lies. Furthermore, for the Bodhisattva, all the visible forms that he sees are visions of the Buddha, but by the power of the concentration of recollection of the Buddhas, he is not attached to these visions. Furthermore, seeing all beings wandering in the sufferings of samsara, the Bodhisattva is not attached to any happiness and forms only the following aspiration. When will all beings and myself be saved? Furthermore, the Bodhisattva is not attached to precious objects and rejoices only in the three jewels. Furthermore, the Bodhisattva has always cut through lust until he no longer has either the memory of it or the notion of it. How could it have any reality for him? Furthermore, Beings who see the Bodhisattva attain the concentration of loving-kindness immediately. Furthermore, the Bodhisattva has reduced all teachings into the teachings of the Buddha and the various classifications such as teachings of the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas or teachings of the Tirthaikas no longer exist for him. Finally, having analyzed all the teachings, the Bodhisattva feels neither the notion of true teachings nor the notion of false teachings towards them. These are the innumerable reasons why he is born into the family of the Bodhisattvas.